So welcome to this public health um, orientation for the Bachelor of Public Health. So this is being um, recorded, so you'll be able to look at this later. And one of the things we want to do today is to introduce you to our teaching team. So we're going to go in order, but first of all, I'll give you run through a presentation. Because we're a little bit late, I'm just going to check in with Billy to see when you need to leave. The time's not on this machine. Could I please borrow someone's watch? Okay, only six minutes, 37. So, yeah, yeah, you're okay. Okay. So, welcome to our College of Medicine and Public Health orientation for the Bachelors of Public Health. So, first of all, I wish to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land in which we meet, and also like to acknowledge and pay respect to the elders of the land, both past and present. So, what we're going to do today, this is the outline. We're going to look at the people you will meet in your Bachelor of Public Health course, a little bit about the overview of the program, and then some about the overview of the, of the support services. I'm going to start with the support services first and run through them pretty quickly and then give you some advice. And so if you have any other questions, we'll be able to come back and you can talk to me or talk to someone later. So first of all, this is O Week. Um, Tina, you would have started at the start of the year when we had we were all in lockdown. And so now this is your opportunity to come to the campus and take advantage of the free lunch and all the great things that we do. So I know, like we might just have a window of opportunity before anything else happens. So as you know, there's lots of resources. There's free music, there's live bands, there's giveaways, competitions. Why wouldn't you want to come to campus? So this is all about enrolling in your topics. This I'll go through this just briefly. About your textbooks and scholarships. Really in public health, we're all about equity. You don't need to be that high level of student, although we welcome, and I know you are, but there's more information about scholarships. I got through um, primary school and high school on the scholarship. This is information which is standard for everyone. And check out the orientation planner. And also today, there's a welcome hub. People are on campus to ask any questions that you have about your course and your study. And there's an orientation video library. If you ever have some spare time, just go to the library. It's not like libraries in the old days. You've got rooms, you can book a room. You can get someone to help you with your research or look up a resource. You know, years ago, libraries weren't allowed to talk, but now they encourage you to talk. And that's all the supports. Annual safety. Okay, this is where we start. So things are a little different at university. So it's not like high school where you've got one teacher. You really are more independent. You have a course coordinator, which is me. I can meet with you and advise on your study plan, like we've done before, so that you've got oversight of where you are and where you're going. And also we've got topic coordinators, not teachers. So your topic coordinator is responsible for your topic each semester, and today you'll meet most of your topic coordinators. So really, when you're at university, it's all about us scaffolding your learning and facilitating, but really, you're a self-directed, independent learner, and in year one, we'll scaffold that, give you tasks in year one, and then the more complex in year two, and then in year three, the more complex. But we will build through that together. So for an example, here's a program that you've all got. You know, in year one, you start off with introduction to public health, so the topic coordinator for that is Joy. She's not here today, but you will be seeing her every week for the next 12 weeks for two hours. So you have plenty of time to... Pardon? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jolie. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then Sadia will be teaching epidemiology, and then we do biostatistics, health equity, evaluation. So by the time you get to year three and you do your project, you'll be at a different level of being self-independent where you actually work with organisations. So again, you're on the pathway. Our role is to guide you. And really, um, when we look back on our university years, 
This is your time to make friends, meet people. You know, all these international students, you've got the world at your feet and they can learn just as much from you. But it's important that if you are struggling to let us know early, we are all very supportive and kind and encouraging, but at the same time, enjoy your university life. We don't want this to happen to you. <laughs> So meet the team. So today you meet me, um, Billy Bonesky, Andrea, Sadia, Shahid, Kate, Jamil and Joy will be here virtually. But you'll be seeing more of Joy than anyone. So this is me. So we're just going to give you an idea of, you know, what I've done in public health. You know, I worked at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, work cover, I worked at University of Dublin and University of Adelaide and in general practice training programs. So I started off as a nurse, worked in primary health care, rehab, acute care. So recently knocked down the hospital that I trained in, the Royal Adelaide Hospital, but brought a brand new one. And that was really sad to see this building. It's a bit like if they demolished Flinders. We would all have memories. And then I went into management and occupational health. So I've got four degrees, but they're kind of built on each other. So. That's why I can teach public health, because I've been at the bedside, I work with um, injured patients, done all of this, done research, done management, so I bring a broad perspective to public health. So my public health story, I was born in Glasgow in Scotland, and we talk about the social determinants of health, about where you were born, where you grew up, where you lived. So the picture on the right is Glasgow from the same spot as the picture on the left. So Glasgow used to be an industrial city where the main thing was shipbuilding and there was lots of asbestos, so there's lots of mesothelioma. But recently it's become the European city of culture. So it just shows you how things can change. So Glasgow was a poor city and then it changed. So what's important to me is that um, when we talk about public health, the word that's really important to me is public. Because I went to a public school where I got scholarships and then any time I went into education, I got further scholarships. So really, I came from a very poor background, a family of eight. My mum was one of eight, my dad was one of eight. No one went to university. I was the very first person who thought, what are you doing? But it just shows that you know education can really transform a person. So I know what it's like to be at the very beginning. And that's my little story. And now I'll go on to Billy Bonesky. Thanks, Annie. Thank you. Hello. Lovely to see you. And whoever is online, I hope there's somebody watching. <laughs> I'm Billy Bonesky. Um, and I'm Head of Public Health here at Flinders. Uh, my background is that I come from Europe and when I was young, my family emigrated to Australia, initially to Newcastle, and that's where I've lived most of my life and I've worked at the University of Newcastle for many years. And last year I moved to Adelaide to take this position up um, at Flinders. And I'm a behavioural scientist by training. So what that means is that I'm really interested in why some people engage in unhealthy behaviours and how we might be able to encourage them to engage in more healthier behaviours. So my team and I develop uh, health behaviour change programs uh, like helping people quit smoking, um, programs like the Slip Slop Slap campaign that you might have seen in the media on using sunscreen to um, protect from skin cancer and prevent skin cancer. Um, and then we evaluate whether or not those programs um, work. So changing people's health behaviours is central to a lot of the work that I've um, I've done and my team have done and I've been doing this for a really long time um, and I just love it 
And what I love about it is that it does genuinely make a difference to people's lives. Um, I, in, in my research, I talk to a lot of um, community members about what we're developing as far as our health programs are concerned and then they might participate in our research and then we talk to them again. Um, after the research is done and there's always uh, immense gratitude that somebody cares about their health and uh, that we're helping them uh, lead healthier lives. So uh, I know firsthand that what we do in public health does actually make a difference to people's lives. And if you look at COVID, for example, last couple of years, things like mask wearing and vaccinations, um, social distancing, they're all public health measures that have made a huge difference to people's lives. The focus is on healthy communities and healthy societies in, in public health. So it's not about treatment of disease and I like that as well. I like the fact that we keep people healthy rather than look at them after they've already become sick. And health inequality is a big part of uh, public health uh, and, and I certainly work with a lot of priority populations. Um, here at Flinders we have a strong focus on health equity and uh, First Nations health as well. Um, if you decide to go on in public health, then you know that, that's certainly a path that you might uh, want to pursue. And it's really diverse. Public health is lots of things to different people and it's interesting and I think you've made the right choice in, in choosing public health. This is a big part of the team, so you'll meet a few, um, a few of them today, and, and they're here. In fact, Shahid's wearing matching clothes so that you can spot him in that photo. <laughs> um, uh, but they're wonderful people. Yeah, they're talented and they're passionate and uh, they're kind and um, I, I know you'll be well looked after uh, by our public health professionals here at Flinders. And, you know, this now, the next few years, and, and then, you know, if you go on to postgraduate work, um, perhaps more years, you have a chance to think about what difference you want to make with public health and who do you want to be because there's a long list of potential occupations and careers that you can um, go into with, with your basic public health degree and this is just some of them, you know, health promotion, you can be a public health officer. Uh, for those of you located here in Adelaide, you would have seen uh, Professor Nicola Spurrier on TV. She's, she's trained in public health. She's our Chief Public Health Officer in South Australia. There's women's health, Aboriginal health, children's health, migrant health. Um, you can be an ap epidemiologist or, or a statistician. There's so many different options and, and like I said, I think you've made the right decision in doing um, public health and I'm just really keen to see um, what you do and what difference you'll make. So welcome to Flinders. Now the next person is Andrea. Thanks Billy, morning everyone and those online. So my name's Andrea. Uh, I will be coordinating health equity in uh, semester two for the second years. Uh, so a little bit about me, I am a Gidja health academic, so my family are from uh, the Kimberley. If anyone's been to uh, the Bungle Bungles, that's where my family are from, right up the top. Um, and I grew up in small country town, Carnarvon, which is known as the banana plantation town with the big banana. Um, yeah, so I went to, uh, to medical school in WA, so my background is as a doctor and I've worked in Perth, uh, Derby and in Alice Springs as a medical practitioner and um, I got into research, so I've done a master's in looking at clinical decision making in Aboriginal health. Aboriginal health is my sort of passion and interest. And I like that research can uh, take a step back and start to change how things are done at a system level. 
uh, so that got me into education in medical school. So I've been working as a medical uh, educator, academic, up until joining Flinders in public health. Uh, so I put eternal student there because I think I made these slides at the start of the year just as I was submitting my PhD, but I think that's a fun thing about working in academia and in education and public health is that everything is constantly uh, changing and we're creating new knowledge but we're also learning as well. So that's a really fun thing, I think, about being in this field. So those are a few of the different jobs that I've had, places that I've lived. I lived, was in Port Augusta last year working at the Royal Clinical School. Uh, so hopefully in health equity we'll be able to talk a bit about Aboriginal health, about rural health, and starting to think about some of the, the structural drivers that um, exist and how we can, as public health academics, begin to, to change those and shift those long term. Uh, so when thinking about what public health means for me, this is Mary G, so Mary G, um, or Mark Bim Barker, so Mary G is his alter ego, is also a uh, Gidja man, so we're of the fame, uh, same family group. He's in Broome, she, she and he are in Broome. Um, and Mary G is, uh, she calls herself the queen of the Kimberley and is involved in a lot of health promotion in a way that integrates music and humour that's contextually specific um, within the Kimberley. So Mary G does a lot of engagement with our um, ACHO, so our health organisations up north um, with community uh, and uh, with, with youth around uh, health, health behaviour. And Mark Bimbarker, who's a, who's Mary G's alter ego, is also on the board of the, um, of the Healing Foundation, which looks after stolen generation members and advocacy around addressing the impacts of, of past policies in the Kimberley. Uh, so I just put Mary G up as a sort of a very contextually specific um, example of how public health can can be very tailored and can be quite fun and into integrate lots of different things such as music and, and humour into how we go about promoting messaging. Yeah. Very, yeah. So if you if you'd like, there's lots of videos and different things. Um, Mary G also, yeah. And uh, she has a radio station um, that runs every every night in Broome. People call in, and because she's a musician as well. Yeah, she's got lots of albums that constantly play when I go home. just need to say that we're ahead of time, so if you do have questions. Thanks, Annie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sadia. So I am a lecturer, part-time lecturer teaching specialist um, in public health and part-time researcher epidemiologist working in all different places. Um, so I wanted to put that up there. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but all the acronyms there uh, tells you uh, about all the places I work in. So, and they are all universities. So, University of New South Wales and University of Toronto, University of Wollongong, University of Adelaide. Um, and I work in all these projects uh, in preterm baby outcomes in three countries and uh, safety, hospital safety for adult patients, um, child maltreatment, and family violence. Um, so. I wanted to put it up there because just I'm an early career researcher um, and within the short span of my work life, you know, I got to work in different projects and that's what public health uh, does for you. You can work in many places and many projects um, and if you are interested in many things, um, that's a good thing. And, um, you know, most of all, you can help people. Uh, I'm going to be the topic coordinator for epidemiology, uh, PHCN 3511. I know some people get scared about maths and think, okay, epidemiology is a lot of maths, but epidemiology is actually a nice balance between maths and numbers and um, concepts and ideas. Because with epidemiology, you learn how to tell a story using numbers. So this data is on um, skin cancer. So risk of skin cancer in people under uh, 30 years of old, uh, 
over, over the years. So from 1982, so on the x-axis, we have all the study years from 1982 to 2020. And up here on the y-axis, you have all the percentage of risk, right? And you can see a clear pattern where um, the risk of diagnosis of skin cancer has gone down over the years. Um, and this is a really old um, government public health campaign um, that I think it's from 1970s or 1980s. Uh, so this was one of the first ones. And you will know that over the last 30 years or so, uh, Australian government has run a lot of successful campaign around um, being sound smart. So the younger people are more sound smart. And this is, that's the reason why you see a pattern like this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the sort of thing you can do with public health and epidemiology. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this journey. Good morning and welcome to Flinders University. And thank you, Annie, for giving me a chance to, to, to present a five minutes. It's ten, five minutes statistic. Eight minutes. Uh. <laughs> My name is Shahid Ullah. You can see from here. Uh, uh, I can change the slide, actually. So my name is Shahid Ullah, and uh, I, am, uh, I am an associate professor in biostatistics uh, for the College of Medicine and Public Health. Uh, I teach uh, biostatistics uh, in our Bachelor of Public Health. Uh, so you will be joining with us, uh, you already, but uh, biostatistics is in second year, first semester. I also teach uh, biostatistics uh, for our MPH program and also teach uh, biostatistics uh, for our uh, Doctor of Medicine program uh, here uh, at Flinders. So I have been looking at numbers and figures for many, many years, uh, uh, like uh, more than two decades. Uh, and I have been practicing biostatistics uh, uh, for many years, my undergraduate, my master's, my PhD, everything in, in, in biostatistics. So why you, t why you need to learn biostatistics? So that's the first question. Uh, uh, as you know or don't know, uh, biostatistics and public health are, uh, are, uh, are interrelated to each other. And uh, they can uh, the, uh, and aim to the improve the health and well-being, uh, the cure of disease, uh, and save lives. Uh, uh, the, in the world. So the, the, the good news is that uh, the students and researchers uh, have been experiencing or have been interesting in biostatistics uh, in the recent years uh, uh, from a big data set uh, uh, from COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, so when uh, the the when you design uh, your uh, study, your, when you collect your data set, organize your uh, study, analyze the data set, uh, summarize, uh, interpret, and disseminate, uh, this whole process uh, we call the biostatistics. Uh, so the, the good news is that uh, uh, the big data is coming in the recent days, uh, and you have an opportunity to learn uh, from this uh, big data set. Uh, uh, the, and that biostatistics uh, the topic uh, the contains uh, or includes a lot of uh, the keywords you can see from this slide. Uh, uh, like you already heard or you already know from your high school um, the learning, um, the like uh, data, data type, uh, the population, uh, the, the, the disease, uh, the analysis, uh, the outcome, uh, categorical, uh, discrete, continuous. So those kind of keywords uh, uh, the, the you will be learned from biostatistics uh, topic. 
So you can see if the if you if you want to if if you are capable to uh, interpret uh, these keywords uh, from the research uh, from the practice, uh, uh, then uh, I believe that public health and biostatistics uh, is an excellent career choice uh, in in your future pathway. So the, you have a very good news. Uh, I have a very good news for you. Uh, the, I, the, I bring a topic called uh, PHCA uh, 2507, uh, Biostatistics in Bachelor of Public Health. Uh, what I mentioned, uh, the, it will be available in, in the second year, first semester. And you have an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to uplift your uh, your quantitative knowledge uh, in biostatistics uh, from your public health uh, expertise. The goal of this topic uh, is to um, uh, is to gain knowledge of the quantitative. What Sadia mentioned here, that data speaks, uh, data tell the story. Actually, the story can, you can make a story from the data set. So that's uh, a nice combination of epidemiology and also biostatistics. Uh, so the, the, you can learn a lot of biostatistical methods, tools, and how to interpret the data set, and uh, uh, how to analyze the data set, and how to uh, make a nice uh, storyline from the data set that people can uh, understand. And uh, it would be beneficial for the community, uh, uh, for, for the health practice, and especially for our uh, population. Another, the, the, another opportunity for you to learn a, a software. Uh, this is we call the cutting edge technology in the world. Uh, and uh, we have been using a, a, a nice software to analyze the data set and this is called uh, R programming. So this is not mentioned here. So th there's another opportunity for you to learn R programming and then analyze the data set and interpret and disseminate the data set. Uh, so that's all from my side. Uh, the, the, uh, again, welcome to Flinders University and uh, the, I hope to see you in future. Thank you. So Shahid, uh, when I think of mathematical, I, my head automatically goes, <laughs> So with the technology, am I right in thinking that I, I, I don't need to worry so much that a lot of the mathematical side of it is in the computer technology and then we just learn how to interpret? So we're not going to be using lots of complicated equations and formulas and things like that. Is that correct? Uh, actually, uh, this topic is designed uh, from application side, not okay. from the mathematical side. That's uh, good. <laughs> uh, so that we... Uh, we uh, we use minimal mathematics actually to. So we're using something that's findings. already in place, and then we just interpret yes, that later. Definitely, yes. Awesome, thank right. you. So thank you. Oh, that's me. G'day, I'm Kate. Um, I actually only recently came aboard public health at Flinders um, um, and now I'm a public, um, I'm a lecturer in public health and health equity. So my university journey really began in Adelaide um, and I studied health sciences um, but in the late 90s, that's a long time ago isn't it? <laughs> Um, I moved to Canberra and transferred to a Bachelor of Science at ANU. So my honours was in psychology and I worked as a, um, a research assistant at this Institute of Sport um, until I then took on a full-time PhD at the Centre for um, Mental Health Research, which was a standalone centre at ANU. So, while my first year of undergrad at Adelaide showed me how fundamental public health was to a whole host of um, interventions that were engineered to improve health and lower disease um, and disease risk, it really wasn't until I began my PhD on mental health using epidemiological methods that I really got my teeth into cr how critical mental health 
was to a functioning society. Now, just a little aside there. It's so ironic that I went into epidemiology because I can remember at high school, I was enrolled for, I don't know, year 11, maths one and two, and my maths two teacher said, look, I really think you should transfer out of maths. It's really not your thing. So I had to move out and feeling a little, you know, dissuaded about maths. Anyway, isn't it funny how things turn around? Um, so, epidemiological methods allowed me to understand, it's the medicine I had to have, clearly, um, that um, understand by analysing population health data. I was actually identifying distributions, patterns, determinants of health across a range of sub and general populations in my own research. I felt empowered. So this was really exciting and really quite a profound experience for me, the maligned math student in high school. So what do I love about public health? Um, so there's a few bits up there, but what I really like is that it's super diverse. There is a huge scope um, to contribute to a whole host of incredibly meaningful pursuits in a public health career. I mean, you, you've heard a whole lot from my colleagues just now. But for me, this is really entailed in working on many different research projects um, and roles, including things like acceptance of fortification of foods with CSIRO, um, men's mental health and infertility, risk factors relating to suicidality, um, mental health in the Australian Defence Force, genetic and environmental factors that are involved in eating disorders, chronic disease self-management for people with severe mental illness, and even gambling disorder. So you can see it's really wide. So all of my roles have been really united by the fact that I sought to understand how these issues related to mental health. And where my ultimate drive, and still is, that I want to support people's mental health and well-being. So, um, finally, as my lectureship suggests, I'm really passionate about health acknowledging and incorporating diversity. People and cultures experience health in many different ways, yet underpinning this variability is health as um, as a universal right. So as a collective, it's fundamental to strive to develop systems to deliver healthcare that reflects this. So if you have a passion, curiosity, a desire to make a difference like I do, it drives me day to day. To make a difference to health of our community, look, come study with us. If you are fabulous, I can't wait, I lecture in second year topic um, coordinator of evaluation in a public health context, but you'll have a great time. So thanks for coming and look hope to see you around. That's me. Now this is Jali Dakela, um, who's also called Joy. So she is in Sydney, but she'll be here next week. And as I said, anyone who's just starting will see her every week for two hours, <laughs> for 12 weeks, so she has a much better chance. So Joy has actually worked all over the world and studied all over the world, so she'll be really good with some international students because she's been there, she's had that experience. So she's a very well qualified researcher and recently she's come to us and she'll be teaching the introductory topic, topic, introduction to public health. But I'll let her speak more on that. And look at her motto, improve people's health in every part of the world. Which is so true. And when you look at her map, she's been in London, Boston, New York, San Francisco, Singapore, Tokyo. Can't read that one. <laughs> and Sydney. 
So, Jim Mill Lockett is our student rep, but he's not here. So, yes, dear. <laughs> but he might come later. What I'm going to do now, close your eyes, I'm just going to go back to one thing in case you get... Oh, this one. Because we've still got some time. And if you want to ask any questions. So I really resonate with students that come to me and say that they're scared about biostats, being scared about epidemiology. But it will be okay. Like, for example, um, at university, um, I'll just go back a step. People always say, what can I do if I have a Bachelor of Public Health? Well, as you can see here today, you can do anything and everything. If you did a degree in accounting, you would be an accountant or economics and economist or occupational therapy. That's what you would be. But when you do public health, you have a whole lot more scope of interest for you to do. And really in public health, it's about serving the community and improving the health of others. So we know, we think that's a really good track. So for example, when I studied economics at university, I learned all about fiscal policy, balance of trade, all these terms. And then I realized that I've been listening to the news every day and people were talking about these terms, but I had no idea what they meant. And then I realized that politicians also would use these terms and they didn't know. <laughs> you know, when you hear them in the campaign, they're talking about the trade deficit, the balance of payments and all this, a lot of them don't even know. So knowledge gives you power. So in the past few years, we've heard a lot about health and epidemiology and biostats in the news. So once you do these topics, you'll be able to be really informed and say, I understand now what that person's talking about. You know, numbers needed to treat, prevalence, all these terms. We've all been reading them, but not really knowing what they mean. So you will become, as Kate said, and others empowered to think, well, I can tell a story. Any research in public health gets, lets you teach a story. So I was around in the 70s, and I remember the Slip Slop campaign. <laughs> it was at the 80s. It was, what was the name put on? A hat put on it. Slop on it. There was a song. See? Slip Slop Slap. So thank you, Sally, for bringing that to our attention. So. That will really help. It was like the other campaign they had about Norm. Yes. See, I that. see, you probably weren't even born. Um, you had to get off the couch because Norm used to sit on the couch. Uh -huh. Now um, I can't remember the slogan for that, but now they have a really good ad on ABC TV where it talks about walking for five minutes. Have you seen it? And it just says, just get up and do anything for five minutes. Do you want to use the... Um Can you hear me? Yeah. It, w it would be good, actually, to, to see, because uh, there's probably a lot of families like me. I, I don't watch TV, so I won't watch the normal ABCs and stuff like that. Everything I watch is Netflix. So it would be good to see how in the future, whether yeah, in terms of public health and preventative methods for things like people watching too much television, not getting out enough into the, the open air, whether we could push something into areas like that as well, so that it's not just you know those who are watching TV, it's those who are watching it who aren't doing it through your yeah, ABC channels and things like that. Because there's probably a lot like me who you know don't watch TV and don't see these things because I haven't seen anything like that for many years. I think the last time I watched TV was probably about 12 years ago. Well, that's me too. But when you watch that like SBS On Demand or anything, those ads come up. And so when you um, study public health, we'll get you to watch lots of global news too, like not just the Australian news, perhaps Al Jazeera or Deutsche Welle, or, you know, because what's happening in Europe, in Ukraine and in Sri Lanka and what's happening in the Solomons, they're all really relevant to yeah. everything we do in public health, so we'll be encouraging you to maybe not, well, you can do Netflix, but to um, do a, a broader spectrum of sources. Yeah, it'd be good to get, get that to other people as well, so yeah. it's nice to see these That's things. I mean, I know they do things like BTN now at schools, which is, yes. I think is really great. Yeah. I, I've not heard of that before, because in, in the UK, I'd never uh, seen anything like that at schools, um, yeah, so, for um, myself and for my oldest child, but here, my kids do watch it here, so it is really good. 
Yes, some years ago, they, um, I think it was the Liberal government, they got rid of BTN behind the news and there was such an uproar that they had to bring it back. So I'm just saying that when you actually do this public health, you can see that you'll need to know a little bit about an introduction to public health, a bit about how the body works, and once you learn how the body works, you'll make biostatistics you know, into place a bit more how to evaluate public health. Health equity is a really important topic. They're all important topics, but what we do is we, you know, how your body works, reset skills, the indigenous stream, they're really important. The way the program has been designed is to be um, comprehensive. And also, even though you're at university to study these topics, at public health, we believe in giving you a broader education because everyone comes to university for that broad set of skills so that you can understand and contribute to knowledge, you know, and become an emerging leader. So it's just not about the topic learning outcomes. You know, we all have a really important role in public health. Even just conversations with your friends and your families. There's so much misinformation and myths out there about public health so that we cover that too. Does anyone in the teaching team have anything that they want to Add any pearls of wisdom? I can bring the microphone to you. Could I just have one pearl of wisdom? I don't know if this is a pearl of wisdom, but what Annie was saying around a comprehensive sort of package in public health is really fabulous because what I think is important is that you get a really broad sense of the, of the area and then you can make the connections with us, you know, leading you to make that um, connection. That's real learning. We're not forcing it down your throat. You're actually coming up and having that enlightening thought yourself. And then that will stay with you and help you make connections further on. If we had a very narrow stream, then that really crushes that creativity that's really important in learning. So um, we've got everything that you need, we'll bring you, and you need to make that enlightened thought. And also, I, I teach in the Masters, and I teach critical perspectives on global health. Have we got a few minutes? So when I teach in the Masters, I teach critical perspectives of global health. This is just about encouraging you to think broadly. So my first lecture was in February, and I was talking to them about the oil prices and the global crisis in the 70s and the 80s to give them some background. And students said, why are we learning about economics? And they said, what do oil prices have to do with us and petrol? You know, and then the Ukraine war started the next week and all these students said, oh my goodness, the price of petrol, who would have thought? And then of course I went through history does repeat itself. You know, and like for developing countries, like you lend them money and then they can't pay back money. It's all to do with the World Bank and economics. And when you look at what's happening in Ukraine, it's just the whole geopolitical situation. You know, the food shortage, violence, war crimes, everything. People were in their homes, one middle class people, homes, schools, everything. And then the next week there's displacement. So that brings in the story about refugees. People can't access food, water, and shelter, which are the basic fundamentals of public health. So it really is important. And, and now in the UK, so even in a developed country, we're having heat waves. Heat waves. And you know the community is not set up for having heat. That exactly level. that. It's been They're having huge difficulties yeah, now. Forty degrees in England, and some of the hospitals don't have air conditioning. No, no, no. And it's just, so public health is everything, and everything is public health. It, it's been really good for me in like hearing everybody's different backgrounds, because when, when I first started the course, and before I started the course, um, you hear of so many people with doctorate backgrounds and things like that, and I, I don't. 
so I came in and then at first I was very much like oh you know I'm sort of that imposter syndrome I want to be there but I don't feel like I belong there um, but then it's been good hearing that you know you don't necessarily have to have that you can have been bad at maths at school um, and then been working in it and, and it's worked out really well so it's, it's good to hear that there's so many different aspects um, that you know can all sort of interlink with each other and play a part so I'm, I feel much happier being here today and hearing everyone's different backgrounds. Oh, thank you I just want to add uh, one more tiny wisdom. <laughs> Uh, from and his continuation, like a public health is everything. Like that, so I have an opportunity to teach uh, our medical program, medical students uh, here. We have almost 200 students, uh, and also I have an opportunity to uh, engage with the research project, uh, like in advanced studies project. Uh, uh, in the, they start from second year to fourth year, so that's why I know actually so what they are doing here. And I know actually what you are doing here in, uh, uh, in public health. Uh, the good news for you, uh, uh, even though they learn a lot of clinical science uh, from their medical program, but uh, most of the students, they're doing the public health topic, a public health research project, because how, how important the public health, uh, especially in clinical medicine. And also, uh, we are trying to uh, make a pathway from uh, medical program to public health so they can learn public health uh, one year from, uh, from our program and then back to the, uh, back to the clinical science. Uh, and I had an opportunity to talk with many students and they said, yes, that's a very good pathway actually from uh, clinical science to the public health and uh, can interrelate to each other. So that's, uh, I think uh, uh, you are, uh, 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 so, so you are lucky actually, so you, you are here at uh, in public health and uh, and uh, th th that's a very good decision for, for, for you actually to, to choose actually that public health topic. Thank you. So many stories. We can have more stories. We should probably do this more often. You know, Kate talked about being downgraded in maths. Well, I didn't even finish high school. Tina. Before I came to university, I had to do a stat test to get in. So I had a math tutor help me with the uh, quantitative side. And he said to me, um, oh, you know, you, you'll, you'll be fine with this, um, but maybe you should rethink about what you want to do at uni. I don't, maybe the public health with all the statistics and stuff like that is not the thing for you. Maybe you should just go into teaching or something. And, and I was a bit like, well, I've been in the education side and I really wanted to go into the public health because I, I like the, the equity of it. I want to help people in that aspect. And I, so I was a bit taken back and thought, oh, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I shouldn't. But then hearing that, you know, I, you know, I was told, you're not very good at math, so maybe you should not do it. And then to go on and do it makes me have a bit more faith in myself. So that's, that's been really good. Um, if I could just say a little um, adjunct to that. The thing that I found um, really that made a difference, I can remember in, in, in high school maths, everything um, seemed to be quite abstract by nature. Of, you know, maths can be quite abstract. And so when I came to looking at you know, stats and maths in, in, um, later in um, undergrad, but also then going towards my um, honours and PhD, it had a context. I could see how I need to use these these um, methodologies in order to get to the nub of what I was trying to study. So there was a real motivation. It wasn't just, oh, I just have to get this work, this proof out, yeah. which was kind of fun in that it was a challenge. But when you keep on getting it wrong, it becomes a little bit of gravel rush eventually. So with, with uh, um, public health and, and my need to use epidemiological methods, it was like, no, okay, I need to try a little bit harder. I need to work with a study group. I need to read this. I need. So there, were, there was a reason and a drive to go. And then I got it. Well, and then probably forgot it, but I get it again. And so it's a process and you can't, well, for me, I don't have a super great memory. So I just have to refresh and refresh. And I work across a whole lot of different things. And so the process is refresh, refreshing and getting into the slot and then I do something else. So 
it's okay, you know, I'm, I'm all right with it now. <laughs> but it's, yeah, at the time it was like, oh dear, but keep going. Thank you. I just remember the name of that campaign was Norm. Life be in Life it. Life be in it. Yeah. Da 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 da. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you um, for coming in. Please encourage your um, colleagues if you meet them. Like we're all really approachable. Do we have any final questions? Final comments? And that like, we've learned a lot about each other today too. Because normally we're so busy, we don't say, "Hey, when I was in high school." <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, most of them wouldn't know that I didn't finish year 12. I went back to do year 12 when I was 25. It, it's for me as well, it's uh, I think uh, probably for you as well, Janet, is that it's because it's so diverse. We're both at the beginning of the journey as well. We're kind of like, uh, you know, well, where are we going to end up? Yeah. You know, what, what sort of profession are we going to go into at the end of it? Um, and it's it's quite nice knowing that there's a big area so that there, there is going to be somewhere that you know we will find our niche in and we can find somewhere to be um now we just need to follow that path and see where it takes us at the end so and i, I really I, I really like the mental health side of it and the equity so that's really good to know that i am in the right field because i did have a, a blip at the end of last term and i was a bit like oh am i doing the right thing so yeah for me it's really good to to hear that you know all these things do interlink with one another and end up being something better later on thank you and thank you for that wonderful feedback thank you did you have any questions are you okay so when i choose this bachelor of public health i look up the handbook i saw the topics are so diverse yeah i know i know what's what's going on is a public health because I'm um, when the time I choose a public health is the most serious period of the COVID-19 right especially I'm from Hong Kong and then there's a such a dense population city and it, and it have a mass mass situation there so I just look up the handbook and saw oh the topics here is so so diverse and seems is all the things is related to the situation that we are facing. So especially I, I'm really interested with the epidemiologists and the biostatistics, although I'm not really, really good at math, but I, th I thought these topics are really like helpful. And then and in a scientific ways to, to, to how, how to resolve the problems that is happening in the societies. So um, I th I, I'm really like, looking forward to study these topic in order to like to help my careers or pathways something like that but it's really uh, looks of looks interesting yeah yeah great thanks Thank for you. everyone's today right. yeah because the pandemic just shows that public health impacts on everything yeah even because of the pandemic um children haven't been getting the usual yeah. vaccinations and immunizations yeah. it, it so affects every every so. aspect right even the food the economics there's and the like the water the the human rights yeah there's so many controversial topics within the these like these big topics so it's really diverse and and it is really um, need to like study more to get more knowledge about that to, and then to solve the problems I think it's like that yes and like we've learned a lot from um, China yeah. too like how they manage those masks yeah e exactly um, it's testing is pretty amazing yeah and so we'll sign off now thank you for all your comments yeah there's a lot of issues coming in the future, right? It's yeah. I like COVID, so we need to prepare for the future, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I'm just going to officially close and say thank you for everyone. This is the end of the session.